Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm working on our P48, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100. Uh, I'm going to be uh, doing that rivet grinding today. Uh, I know in the last video I had planned to do some uh, rivet grinding, but uh, I didn't get around to it. Uh, I had other other chores I was working on. So today, that's uh, that's what I'm going to focus on is lots of cutting, lots of grinding. So. Uh, I'm going to set up the cameras and get some different angles of that stuff and uh, how I get these rivets out of the frame and um, how I trim the brackets off of the axle tubes and uh, clean up the axle tubes uh, for our new leaf spring purchase. And uh, I started getting some of these parts in that I ordered uh, for the P48. Um, so I got some exhaust components in. Uh, our Dynamax uh, race bullets that we're gonna we're gonna run. Uh, tiny little muffler doesn't really probably do a whole lot on the muffling, but uh, we're going to put those out here uh, under the running board near the outlet of the exhaust. And uh, I've got to talk to the owner of the truck here about where we're going to exit the exhaust from. I have a couple ideas that um, that uh, may not go over well with all Chevy owners, but uh, I think it's going to look bitchin' and sound awesome uh, where I want to put the outlets. So I've got to talk to uh, talk to the owner about it and see if he agrees with uh, what I want to do with that. Um, but I bought these bullets because we want to have a good aggressive sound. This isn't something that you're going to drive every day, and uh, He'd like to, he'd like to be able to run an open header at times, and um, you know the legality of running around with a loud exhaust is a problem. So I bought these because uh, they were cheap and easy, and we can uh, knock it down a few decibels and see how it sounds. If it's still too loud, what we might do is run a set of uh, a set of electronic loud valves where you can change your exhaust flow from one outlet to another. So what we'll do is we'll have one outlet be our bullets and just a just a exit, a straight exit from the uh, exhaust. The other route will be uh, through a set of mufflers that we can add on there, some, some flow masters or something that has a good rumble to it. Um, so that's those are our options. The other way we could go if we don't want to run loud valves is we can always uh, uh, just add the uh, the Flowmaster muffler into our exhaust system before these little Dynamax bullets. So we have options. Adding a muffler is no big deal. Um, we're going to have a good section of straight tubing where we can cut out uh, cut out a, a section and add a muffler down the road so I didn't see any harm in in buying these uh, if they work and it sounds good and it's not too obnoxious then uh, then awesome that's that's exactly what we're looking for
Okay guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me today. You saw me do a bunch of grinding here on rivets on the frame. I uh, had quite a few rivets to grind off and uh, that's my preferred method. Um, I also tried drilling uh, a few rivets out. On the front uh, spring hangers there's two rivets on the bottom of each hanger that needed to be removed completely in order to pry the hanger away from the frame. Um, so I had to drill those out or take the head of the rivet on the inside of the frame off um, and drive it out with a punch and I thought I would try drilling them out. Uh, so I used my I first started with my cordless drill and it killed that pretty quickly so I went to my corded uh, half inch drill and uh, was able to drill them out uh, but it was it was a difficult experience. Uh, I've still got left me with some scars here from the hot uh, shavings, you know, the uh, swarf that's left over from the drilling uh, of those rivets. Um, that's my fault for not wearing uh, protective gear while I was under there and uh, covering up my arms. So I was able to get all the bracketry off the frame and um, tomorrow I'm going to get to the axle. I, I wasn't able to get to the axle today, I just didn't have it in me to, to grind anymore. So. I'm going to tackle that when I'm fresh tomorrow and, and get those leaf spring perches ground off of there. And I'm going to show you guys the method I use to do that. Um, if you have a plasma cutter, you can, you can remove them pretty clean with a plasma cutter. I currently don't have one. Um, so uh, what I'm going to use is just the old grinder method. Um, and I'm going to grind out the weld uh, until I get to the point where the the groove that I've cut at the bottom of the weld turns blue and what that tells me is um, that the metal's so thin uh, at the root of the weld that I can crack it. And once, once I see that blue line form across the entire groove that I cut at the base of the weld then I can knock the, uh, knock the bracket with the BFH uh, or leaf spring, leaf spring perch with the BFH and start a crack forming in that groove um, I'll do that on both sides and then hopefully I can knock them off clean, uh, take the flap disc and clean off the remaining uh, root of the weld that will still be left on the tube and leave us some nice clean tubes. Uh, if you do use a, you know, a plasma cutter, um, you have to make sure you keep your torch angle right so that you're not gouging that tube um, and weakening it. Uh, same thing with the oxy torch. If you use an oxy torch, you know, it leaves a much rougher cut um, and it will definitely score the tube if you don't keep your torch angle correct. Um, so I'm just going to use the grinder. It's just uh, easy enough. I've got two leaf spring perches to remove and hopefully it won't take all that long. And then I'm going to get to mounting up our new leaf springs uh, under the frame rails. And what I'm going to use is uh, these control arm brackets I've had kicking around for many years here in my welding cart uh, that I bought for a a project I was working on uh, back in my rock crawler days and what these are is a, a control arm mount that typically will mount into a cross transmission cross member or uh, a square axle tubed uh, axle something like that and uh, you weld them on and then you locate your control arms well the the opening here is two and five eighths that will work just fine with our two and a half inch leaf springs because uh, you have to have some room for the bushing that you use and we're gonna uh, I'm gonna see what kind of bushings are on these uh, leaf springs hopefully I don't have to change them out but if I do I'll use a, a urethane bushing in here and that should give us the perfect width um, to use these I'm gonna I'm gonna take and continue this cut all the way around the perch and, or the the hanger and um, then weld that into our frame rail and that's where our leaf spring will hang from in the front. Uh, and that should work pretty good. Uh, after that I'm going to start fabbing up the shackle hangers in the back which will just be basically a round piece of tubing, a piece of square tube that I cut on an angle and uh, a reinforcement plate on the back to box it all in. Uh, and those will be our shackle hangers in the back uh, where the shackles will, will hang from. And I'll use urethane bushings for those with a, uh, a steel, steel bush in the center uh, for the bolt. And that should work pretty good. I've used that method many times. And um, that'll give us a shackle, uh, shackle hanger in the back of the frame. 
For shock mounts, I'm probably going to have to weld in a cross member uh, between the frame rails that will give us a mounting point for our shocks. Um, not real sure yet. I'm going to wait till I get the axle in place and get the get the uh, spring plates in place that have the built-in shock lower shock mount on them already, and uh, figure out where I need to locate the upper end of the shock and uh, go from there. Either either I'll build a bracket that'll mount off the inside of the frame rail, or um, like I said, I'll build a cross member. Most likely, I'll build a cross member because adding cross members to a 70-year-old frame like this, you know, doesn't do anything but good. So uh, it'll help stiffen up the chassis, help stiffen up the back end of the car, and uh, hopefully take some of the flex out of the frame. Um, and I've already got tubing for that, so I think that's that's the method I'm going to use. So yeah, I'm excited to be finally getting to do some. Uh, you know some suspension work and some body work here soon. Um, I've uh, been thinking of uh, some ideas for a project that I want to do after I get done with this truck here and get it out of the garage. Uh, the owner of the truck asked me to build some mirror mounts um, uh, to fab up some mirror mounts and I don't do a lot of uh, welding art type projects uh, but these will be an artistic type of project and I'm kind of looking forward to that. I've got some ideas kicking around in my head uh, uh, how I want to make them and I'm not going to go into too much detail about what they're going to look like yet but uh, I'll be putting out a video of that when I get some time to do that. So first things first I gotta get this thing rolling and we're going to get it down on the ground um, get the rear axle in it, get the leaf springs in there uh, put the front suspension together, get it down on the ground see where we're sitting. I'm expecting to have to cut probably half to three quarters of the coil off the front to get the ride height where we want it and we will probably have to use some kind of a block on the rear short block um, to get the axle up high enough which will lower the chassis down where we want it. And put it on a slight rake I like a you know between a half inch and an inch bias to the front uh, of a rake on a streetcar so I'm going to look for that uh, in this project here. Try and get it sitting mean and low and um, looking looking good. Uh, I've got all my exhaust tubing on the way so uh, soon I will be putting the exhaust in here. Uh, hopefully next week I'll start fabbing up the exhaust uh, which will be fun because I haven't done exhaust tubing in a while. So uh, we'll fit it all together and um, I've got to talk to the owner here like I was saying earlier about the bullets um, about how I want to exit the exhaust out from the sides of the, of the truck uh, and hopefully we can get that pinned down so I can uh, start putting all that together this week that's gonna be fun uh, so yeah for today that's it uh, I'm gonna try and get me a hot shower and maybe a burger and a bourbon because I'm uh, or a beer I'm pretty beat today uh, so thanks for watching guys. Uh, please click like and subscribe if you like the video.